Uh, John, I have you loud and clear. How me? Good, sir. Good. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. And, General, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, John. It's great to be with you in the, the press corps there today. Before I go on, I just want to remind everybody to keep those uh, warriors and heroes that lost their lives yesterday in our thoughts and prayers along with their families, the folks that continue to serve in Afghanistan and around the globe doing our nation's business. Uh, we should keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Um, you know, less than a month ago, I was with you there in the room talking about our Global Information Dominance Experiment 3, and today I'm here to discuss U.S. Northern Command's support to Operation Allies Refuge. In addition to our no-fail mission of defending the homeland, United States Northern Command provides defense support of civil authorities, or DISCA. Today our DISCA operations range from providing COVID medical assistance, relieving pressure on the overburdened medical systems in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama currently, while simultaneously supporting wildland firefighting in the Western United States. Additionally, we're providing support to the Department of Homeland Security and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection by conducting detection and monitoring and transportation support for the Southwest Border Mission. We're also ready to conduct hurricane relief efforts if required. And of course, U.S. Northern Command is providing support within the continental United States for Operation Allies Refuge. On uh, July 14th, the White House announced Operation Allies Refuge, which provides eligible Afghan nationals and their immediate families with support uh, of the U.S. government the opportunity to relocate to the United States. The Department of State subsequently acti activated the Afghanistan Coordination Task Force and requested the Department of Defense provide temporary support for up to 3,500 Afghan special immigrant applicants. On August 15th, the Department of State requested and the Secretary of Defense approved additional support for Afghan special immigrant visa applicants and other vulnerable Afghans. In response to this request, the U.S. Northern Command, uh, we're providing temporary housing, medical screening, transportation, and other services for both Afghan special immigrant visa applicants and at-risk Afghans. U.S. Northern Command has been tasked to build capacities to support up to 50,000 Afghans. Uh, to do that, the Department of Defense under U.S. Northern Command has established task forces at Fort Lee in Virginia, Fort Bliss in Texas, Fort McCoy in Wisconsin, and Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst in New Jersey. And on August 25th, the Secretary of Defense authorized three additional military installations to provide support inside the United States for Afghan special immigrant visa applicants, their families, and other at-risk individuals. This includes Marine Corps Base Quantico and Fort Pickett in Virginia and Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. As of today, Fort Pickett has a capacity of 1,000 Afghans, and we're working with the other two installations, Holloman and Quantico, to finalize their final respective uh, capacities. Additionally, while not a task force, U.S. Northern Command is supporting Operation Allies Refuge with services and additional forces, including assisting with managing the flow of evacuees at Dulles Airport and the Philadelphia International Airport in Pennsylvania. That airport is opening up today. Additional sites are possible. Uh, here's a snapshot real quickly of some of the numbers that you'll see at the task forces. So Task Force Eagle at Fort Lee, Virginia stood up in July and currently has a capacity for 1,750. To date, Task Force Eagle at Fort Lee has supported 1,647 Afghan special immigrant visa applicants and their families, nearly half of whom have completed the process and have moved on with the support of the Department of State, non-governmental, intergovernmental organizations, and volunteer organizations. Task Force Bliss at Fort Bliss, uh, Fort Bliss Texas currently has a capacity of 5,000 and received first flights with vulnerable Afghans on Saturday, August 21st. The base has supported to date 2,160 Afghans housed in a mix of hard and soft structures. Final capacities expected to be at least 10,000. Task Force McCoy, Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, currently has a capacity of 10,000 and received their first flights with at-risk Afghans on Sunday, August 22nd. To date, Task Force McCoy has supported 2,383 Afghans who are being housed in hard structures with shower and bathroom facilities located in each building. Task Force Liberty at Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey, currently has a capacity of 3,500 and received its first group of Afghans Wednesday, August 25th. Uh, to date, Task Force Liberty has supported 1,192 Afghans 
who are being housed in a mix of hard and soft sided structures. Final capacity at Task Force Liberty is expected to be at least 10,000. So today our total capacity at these four uh, insta installations is approximately 21,000 and growing. We're steadily working uh, to increase capacity to the 50,000 number by September 15th. The number of military installations uh, supporting this effort could increase in the future. The request for assistance from the State Department specifically requested that the Department of Defense provide culturally appropriate food, water, bedding, religious services, recreational activities, and other services such as transportation from the port of entry uh, to the location of accommodations and some medical services as well. A my team of military, civilian, and contract personnel are working closely with the numerous agencies, both government and non-government, uh, to ensure further requirements and additional capabilities are available for vulnerable Afghans. In addition, the Department of Homeland Security is working to conduct the screening and security vetting for all special immigrant visa applicants and other vulnerable Afghans in the fastest way possible, consistent with the dual goals of protecting national security and providing protection for vulnerable Afghans who supported the United States. That process involves biometric and biographic screenings conducted by intelligence, law enforcement, and counterterrorism professionals from across the interagency community. We are working around the clock to vet all Afghans being evacuated before allowing them into the United States. During recent visits to Fort Lee, Fort McCoy, and Fort Bliss, I saw the operation firsthand, and I'm proudly watched our U.S. personnel operating with compassion as they helped Afghans and their families who have done so much for the United States and our allies through two decades of conflict. Uh, I also talked with some of the Afghans in each location. During a conversation I had with one Afghan family, I asked if, if they had what they needed, if they were doing okay, getting enough to eat, and getting enough to sleep. Uh, the father thanked me, saying they had what they needed, and that it was the first time in a long time that he has slept without being afraid for his family's safety. So thousands of soldiers, sailors, sailors airmen, uh, Marines are working across the United States to complete this incredibly important mission to provide our Afghan colleagues a safe harbor while they finalize their immigration process. I'm also grateful for the support of the communities surrounding each of our bases and for the volunteers and others who are aiding in all of these efforts. Together, we're honor honoring our commitment uh, to our Afghan partners and their families. And I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you. Thank you.